So I was just messing around in Blender and I thought I would uh, record a little video. So um, this is kind of what uh, I've been messing around with so far. I'm just going to delete all of this and uh, start over again. So let's see, let's just uh, click in here. Let's just select everything. Let's just delete. Um, so I do have a uh, HDR file already loaded uh, as the background here for the world. I'm just going to leave that because this is the one I'm going to want anyway. Um, and then I don't have to dig through my file system trying to find it. Anyway, uh, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's uh, First off, I need to fix this file real quick. This is um, uh, the Treasure Island set from uh, Kitbash 3D. Let's see. I think it's got some missing image files. I'm just going to point it to the 2K textures here to save some memory. And let's see, maybe it will finish loading. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, this kit's pretty cool. It's got lots of stuff. I'm just going to use a couple of small pieces out of it. I'm just doing some uh, uh, kit bashing based around um, some photogrammetry pieces from Ian Hubert uh, from his uh, Patreon. Once again, as I usually say in the videos that where I mention him, his Patreon's great. You should go in and, and uh, invest uh, in yourself and, uh, in, in, and invest in him, I guess uh, as well. So, uh, uh, I think it's like seven or eight dollars a month and, and he puts out multiple videos and gives you lots of these, uh, cool assets that he has uh, created for you to use. Uh, obviously they're also being used in his things, so you wouldn't want to use them in your production work, but they're fun just to, you know, make some experimental videos with and try to get the same look um, that he gets if you like that kind of thing and then recreate it using the techniques that he shows you. Anyway, enough about that guy for right now, but he's great. Anyway, so let's switch over here. Uh, let's see. I think I have another. Yeah, so this is one of his um, files. And this is a bunch of uh, rocks and different pieces that he scanned. Uh, he actually lives in the Pacific Northwest, uh, as he states on his uh, Patreon, and so do I. So a lot of this stuff is familiar territory to me. It's a lot of like tide pool type stuff. Um, uh, a lot of, you know, different uh, gravel, rock, different formations like that. This is all just kind of stuff from the yard. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so it's pulling in. Let's, let's get risky here and try to go one more layer with it. Yeah, so as you can see, this is just various little elements. And this is one of those free things I was just mentioning. So anyway, uh, let's just grab, let's see. Uh, I know I'm going to want that. Uh, so yeah, so let's just start with that. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to switch over to my Blender file that already has this uh, HDR background. And let's see, let's just paste this in. Maybe. I'm sure there's a keystroke for zeroing all that out. Feel free and let me know in the comments. Uh, if uh, if you want to, I'm just getting back into Blender, so admittedly I feel like a, uh, a noob again at all this stuff. So anyway, um, I've got this piece here. As you can see, it's it's pretty cool, you know, and this is done with uh, photogrammetry. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit blurry at this resolution, um, but it's sort of meant to be more of a background thing. And so what he's done here is he's just chosen an area with his camera and gone along uh, and f and taken pictures. This actually may be with Polycam app that uses iPhone, I believe, and it can use the video camera to do some of this stuff. Either way, there's multiple techniques. He's captured all this with a camera, running through some software, and made it into a uh, fairly low poly um, 3D model. As you can see, this is, you know, not as... Um, vector intensive as it as it could be um so at any rate let's switch back over here so let's uh i've already got a camera view here i believe i know that's just my camera if i had a camera that's what the view would be so let's do add a camera i usually like to get the camera set up first so that i kind of don't spend any more time building any more of the set than i really need to uh, for the camera uh, let's see so I have the camera selected. Let's go to view. Let's say a line view. Um, oh, I can't. Uh, why is that? Oh, because I'm in. I think I'm because I'm in camera mode. Let's see. Um, 
to get to some type of a view here. Uh, that'll be good enough for now. Uh, so now we will use this command and we'll pop the camera to where we are. There we go. Okay. So let's see. Now we will begin to just basically duplicate this thing and move it around. Um, I highly recommend that you use Alt-D. Um, it uses less memory. It uses the same object, basically. So any changes that you make to that object would... Uh, be uh, duplicated across all of the ones that you've used Alt D to duplicate, as opposed to Shift D, which makes a separate instance but also uses more memory. So I try to use Alt D whenever I know I'm not going to make any changes uh, to the base mesh. Um, it's just way easier on the rendering. Um, and let's see. So let's duplicate that. Let's lock it to this. Let's just rotate this around a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, we'll do Alt D again. We'll lock this one to the Y axis. Pull it back toward the camera a little bit. Uh, again, Alt D. And let's lock this one to the X axis. And let's see, let's move this over here. That probably is okay. Let's see, maybe, maybe drop that down just a little bit. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, and so now let's just kind of select all of these uh, all together. And then let's uh, uh, Alt D that, lock it to the Y axis, um, move it out. It looks a little copy-pasted right through here, so let's kind of grab this. Let's just, um, you know, let's rotate some things. Kind of rotated more than I meant to there, but that's all right. I guess very much like nature, we're just trying to kind of randomly uh, stick some things out there. Lock this one to the x-axis. We'll move this huge chunk over. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's good. We'll do this one again. We'll lock this one to the y-axis. We'll move this on out. Let's rotate this thing around a little bit. Uh, yeah, that pretty much fills in that gap. Let's see. Um, yeah, and that doesn't look too repetitious com considering that we just used one, one asset. All of this is just one asset. So, as you can see, Blender is very, very zippy considering how many uh, faces it has there. So, uh, anyway, let's go back to camera view. Uh, let's add some water next and uh, there's lots of different ways to make a really good water material uh, I'm just gonna do a real simple thing here just just to be fast about this I don't want to take a lot of time on this video um, so there's my plane I'm going to um, you know just expand this guy on out pretty much pretty much to the horizon that's that'll be fine uh, so let's see now let's switch over to the material for this and um, let's see let's name this uh, water and let's see um, you know what let's just make this glass let's just do that let's turn the roughness all the way down um, yeah I know this probably not the best way to do this but it's it's gonna be okay for now uh, let's see, viewport, oh, that's not even showing, uh, this is important, I need this to be blend, I need those to be turned on in case I want to use EV, uh, and I think that that's pretty much it, uh, yeah, we'll see, so, um, let's see, so I'm already in cycles, GPU, uh, let's see, let's, uh, let's raise it up a little bit and see what happens. Let's see if we get a little bit of, well, that's certainly an interesting effect. I'm not sure that was what I was going for, but, uh, wow, interesting, huh? Look at that. I've never seen it do that before. I guess that's just the reflection of the... I mean, I don't, need, don't even know how that's reflecting the rocks there, so... Then maybe just like a little caching glitch or something. Oh, I see what it is. I'm not in full lit mode. Whoops, my mistake. Anyway, so let's switch over to full lit mode. And ta-da, there it goes. It looks great. Um, so, let's see. Um, let's just grab more of this rock. That water looks kind of stretched out there. So, um... Grab some more of these pieces. I don't want to grab that. Uh, let's duplicate this. Oops. 
Let's make like a little peninsula piece going out there, like that maybe. Yeah, we'll see. And uh, then let's see, let's just grab another couple of these little pieces here and Alt D, uh, lock them to X. That's fine. Do a G and Y. And let's see, uh, G and X. Let's just move like another little piece of land out here. Yeah, that just kind of gives it some structure. Um, I could go a step further on this plane. I could add a wave modifier to it. Um, but I, it's okay for right now. I'm really just kind of focused more on the foreground here. So, and speaking of the foreground, let's go ahead and um, let's see, are we in camera view? There we go. Uh, let's do a couple of camera things here. Let's see. Oh, how do I have? I have lots of cameras. I'm not sure how that how that is. Let's see, which one is my active one? My active one is three, maybe? I don't know. Let's just start deleting them until I regret it. Yeah, looks like I'm on camera three. All right. I'm not sure how I had so many cameras. I must have duplicated the wrong thing. Anyway, let's see. Let's, uh, let's change this focal length to like 22 or something. Yes, that didn't change. So obviously that's not the camera that I'm on somehow. And yet it has to be because that's the only camera that there is. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Where is my active camera? Strangely, not something I've ever had to deal with, and now I have to deal with it uh, when I'm recording a video. But anyway, there we go. I think that probably did it. Yeah, there we go, for sure. <laughs> All right, so let's go back and fix this again. Let's... Uh, Uh, yeah, you can see here up close, these rocks are, are fairly low poly. Uh, let's see. Whoop. I'm so used to Unreal Engine for a long time, I'm, I'm just still just kind of getting back used to, uh, to where I was with all of this. Let's see, and I think that was the general direction that we had. Um, oops. Uh, let's do this. Let's uh, lock this camera to the view. Let's see. Let's back out and get my bearings. That looks about like where it was. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. I think we'll we'll just keep that. <clears throat> All right, so let's move on. Let's. Uh, um, I mainly kind of wanted to show how cool this looked even under the water. Um, fairly photorealistic. Uh, so let's see here. Let's uh, let's switch over to this other file. Let's grab yeah. Let's grab this. Let's grab this boat. Let's put this boat into our scene. Let's see. Um, there we go. And cool. So let's see. Let's back that back up. Let's turn off the camera to view so just so I can move it around without disturbing my camera angle. And let's see. Uh, so as you can see, that's a pretty cool looking boat asset. Obviously, these aren't free, um, but they are fairly high quality. 
All right, let's see. So let's go back to our camera angle here. I think in the other one, what I had uh, ended up with was I kind of rotated this around a little bit. Bloop. I uh, suppose it wasn't that way. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, it was more like this. And then I think I just kind of had it stuck on the rocks over here, maybe. Um, I'm just hitting R and uh, X and to kind of rotate this around on the x-axis. And let's see how that sits. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. It looks like it's rest, resting on this and resting on this, and this is up a little bit, and it's you can kind of see that it's kind of stranded there. That looks pretty good, I think. So let's, uh, let's keep that. All right, so um, let's save. Blender likes to uh, sneak up on you sometimes. Uh, let's see, let's grab one of these other things, but I don't, I don't really want to do a cloth simulation right now, so I'm not going to grab one of these. Uh, probably in a future video I'll, I'll use something like this hammock and I'll put some wind and cloth simulation on it. That should be pretty interesting. For now, let's see, let's just grab, uh, yeah, let's just grab like one of these like little shack things and stick it out in the water. Uh, yeah, let's see. Mm. Yeah, all right, let's just do that. That's kind of interesting. Let's have that little shadow in there. Have it maybe here, so we've got something on the third. And uh, let's see. Let's rotate this guy around and see what it looks like on the inside. I think we're going to want the silhouette of the the side like this. Yeah, I think it looks kind of cooler like this, having that silhouette and that shadow on the inside. Um, let's see, let's just move this back a little bit so that those objects are intersecting. And uh, that looks kind of cool just as a base, a base render. So normally at this point, I would make a cube around it. I would turn on some volume and I would add a little bit of mist to it. I'm really kind of trying to break that habit. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is um, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, yeah, so these are some basically video textures. Once again, these particular ones are from Ian Hubert, um, but you can use any type of, you know, steam element or, um, you know, dust or any other type of thing with a black background, and you can, um, you know, load it into your own plane um, and do whatever you need to do with the material to make it fit into your scene. These are already ready to go, and they're part of this uh, kit ops thing that I'm trying out. So I believe I can just grab one of these, like, uh, let's grab this slow diagonal, and uh, let's see, maybe I can click this to say put it there. I think maybe I do this. Set. Okay, so it's there somewhere. Let's see. Oh, I see it. I need to, uh, oh, I have to click to add it to the scene. Let's see, let's rotate it around the Z-axis like this. Uh, let's rotate it on the Y like this. Let's uh, uh, G and Z to kind of bring it down a little bit. Let's see, so the first time through on the playback, it should just be caching all the frames. Yeah, so it's very, very slow moving. And, and I'm on cycles as well, so that's, that kind of looks like trash. But anyway, uh, let's see, let's, let's move this forward a little bit. So it's really like in front of the camera. And then once again, let's use Alt-D um, and let's see, let's lock this 
to the y-axis like this. Let's scale this guy w way up, hopefully. Yeah, it's kind of weird right here how that's intersecting with the water, but it's not terrible. So um, now another thing I want to do is go into the world um, environment here, and I just want to kind of pull this down. Let's see, let's do like 0 0.8 maybe, and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a little more, a little more moody looking. Um, let's see. Yeah, maybe, maybe that looks pretty good. Let's see. Let's just save it. Let's check our render settings. We don't need to be quite that high with it. Let's see. Let's go. Uh, let's just do that. So we're basically the same. Yeah, let's basically set it just basically the same as what we're looking at in the viewport here, just with the denoising. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's just go with that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, all right, great, finished. That wasn't bad at all. Uh, cool. So there we go. I'm going to um, save this off and make this the thumbnail and probably show this at the beginning of the video. But uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and uh, like if you like it and if you learned anything. Um, check out Ian Hubert, as I always say. I'll put some links in the description. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.